Hello, friends. It's an awesome day. I was just out there on the street, the real street, and um, there was a mockingbird again who wanted to sing into the microphone. We, I don't know. Maybe we caught several of his uh, delightful praises to the Lord. Uh, we did Psalm 71 today, which is known as the Psalm for the Elderly. So we got to speak about thinking about getting old. So I think that's the only one in, in scripture that I have identified as a blessing for the elderly. But we spent some good time with it and people came by and said hi. And <clears throat> then it started raining. Yes, it rained and cut cut me short just a little bit because I have to put the Bibles away and the speaker away so they don't get wet. So we we had a good time and now we are going to spend some time preaching through the Bible in a year. Uh, it'll take us a little longer than a year to do all 66 books, but we're working on it. It's going to be close enough to a year to make it, we can say, we're preaching through the Bible in a year. On the street, I'm preaching the blessing of the Lord. So pieces of scripture that uh, show great blessing, I've collected them through the years. And that's what we're doing there. But today, we right now are going to be looking at Lamentations. We have worked through the 8th century prophets. And last week here, we got started in the 7th century prophets. Those would be the years of the 600s before Christ. Those were the years when all the disaster came upon Israel. Those were the years of the grieving prophets. So Lamentations fits very well in the midst of that. The word Lamentations come from Lament, which is a, a grieving poem. A, a lament, I suppose, might not even be a poem, but it's, it's grieving. It's penitence. Um, so... We are in the section of the Bible that is rather sad, very sad, but maybe there's something in it for us. We're going to read Lamentations 1, and then 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5. Selected verses out of each. I will tell you which ones as we read. But before we read, let's pray. Oh, holy God. We bow before you, recognizing our shortcomings and how badly, how much we need to lament. So please bless us. Help us to understand as we read. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this is Lamentations 1, 1 through 5, and verse 16. How does the city sit solitary that was full of people? How is she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princes among the provinces. How is she become tributary? She weeps sore in the night and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwells among the heathen. She finds no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. The ways of Zion do mourn because none come to the solemn feasts. All her gates are desolate. Her high priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted and she is in bitterness. Her adversaries are the chief. Her enemies prosper. For the Lord has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. And here's verse 16. For these things I weep. 
my eye, my eye runs down with water because the comforter that should receive my soul is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy prevailed. Here's Lamentations 2, verses 19 to 21. Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands toward him for the life of your young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom you have done this. Shall the women eat their own fruit and children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. You have laid, you have slain them in the day of your anger. You have killed and not pitied. Lamentations 3, 1 through 3, then 21 to 26, then 31 to 33, and then 48 to 50. I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. He has led me and brought me into darkness, not into light. Surely against me he has turned. He turned his hand against me all day. Verse 21. This I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those that wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Therefore, will I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. Mm. It, is a, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. And here's verse 31. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he cause grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitude of his mercies. For he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. My eye runs down with rivers of water for the destruction of the daughter of my people. My eye trickles down and ceases not without any intermission till the Lord look down and behold from heaven. That was verses 48 and 49 and 50. Now we're going to Lamentations 4, verses 4 and 5. The tongue of the sucking child cleaves to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young children ask bread and no man gives it to them. They that did feed delicately are desolate in the streets. They that were brought up in scarlet embrace dung hills and lamentations 5 18 to 22 because of the mountain of the lord which is desolate the foxes walk on it you O lord remain forever your throne from generation to generation so why do you forget us forever and forsake us for so long a time Turn to us, or rather, turn us to you, O Lord, and we will be turned. Renew our days as of old. But you have utterly rejected us. You are very wroth, angry against us. We're preaching through the Bible in a year. We have come through Genesis and Kings and some of the prophets. We have come to Jeremiah's Lamentations, an amazingly tight and dense work of poetry. Older traditions said that Jeremiah wrote Lamentations. 
Its themes are similar to those of both Jeremiah and the last part of Isaiah. We will review Lamentations today. Let's talk a bit about the structure of Lamentations. For comparison, please think about a novel or a short story. Don't read the last chapter until you get to the last chapter, because the resolution of all pieces of the plot is there at the last and will be spoiled without the proper lead in. That is a novel. For another comparison, please think about a newspaper article. You may not need to read the last paragraph in a newspaper article because all the information is front loaded and the last paragraph merely confirms that you've got it all. That is a newspaper article. For a third con comparison, consider how many of the biblical writings follow the Hebrew penchant for putting the most important thing in the middle with flanking sections that match and provide closure in the last half of each chapter for each chapter that was opened in the first half. I propose that Lamentations is much more like a newspaper article than either of the other examples. Its first two chapters are tightly organized and densely packed with passion-filled expressions of grief. Its third chapter is even more tightly organized and presents a supposed theological answer to the problem of pain, causing some scholars to posit the midpoint as the crux of the writing. <clears throat> Then the last two chapters lose organization and cannot be said to close out the first two. They continue the passionate grief and then lapse too soon into numbness and silence. I take chapters one and two as the main purpose of Lamentations. Let's talk about the content of Lamentations. Zion and daughter of Zion are names used for Jerusalem. Here seen as a ruined city and a broken woman with her children slaughtered or dragged away in slavery. The woman lets loose a mother's fury for her children that were eaten during the famine of the siege, that were beaten to death against rocks by the soldiers, or that are dying now in the streets from starvation. She knows and mourns that the disastrous conditions came because of her sin. Yet this admission does nothing to diminish her grief and fury over the actuality. Zion's weeping is like Jeremiah's Rachel, weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are not. If we think of Jeremiah's other writing, we know that he holds hope for Israel's return and Jerusalem's restoration. For now, however, let us sit with the great grief, the profound pain, the passionate expression of sorrow. I believe that is the purpose of the book of Lamentations, to prepare us to sit with another in the grossest expressions of grief. Without moving so quickly as we often do into the words of theological solutions, <clears throat> the theological solution is given by a man in Lamentations 3. He starts out saying, I am a man. Or he says, I am the man. He, see, he has seen the affliction and felt the dark of being shut out by God. He claims the mercies and faithfulness of the Lord in order to both hope and quietly wait for him. He says he will cry without intermission until God does something. 
I wonder if he has heard the woman. Perhaps he has heard her <clears throat> and now will sit quietly with her while she rages. I wonder if he will urge her to wait quietly for God. This solution doesn't work for the woman. She must be heard. The only thing that brings a break to her lament is her own exhaustion. Perhaps we have heard her and learned a little more about how to be with one another in profound lament. As Walter Brueggemann says, only grievers can experience their experiences and move on. Yes, I have a couple questions for you. They are thought questions. If you find someone to discuss them with, that's great. If you want to call me and discuss them, that's great. Question number one. What do you consider the darkest hour in your country's history? Why? How did you or those present at that time feel? What public reaction best expressed the nation's sorrow? This is looking back at history. But I'm going to show you some things that I lament for right now. I lament for the babies who are never born alive. I lament for the babies who are born alive into families who can't take care of them well. I lament for families where arguing and yelling is part of their communication cycles. I lament for families where abuse is, and I lament for rape victims around the world. I lament for our argumentative status state here in the United States, particularly. I lament for the fear that has grown in our society in the last 25 years. I lament. Question number two. When you had your deepest humiliation or tragedy, what were your feelings toward God? And how did you deal with them? Job needed some friends to hear. Did you have friends who could hear in your deepest tragedy or humiliation? Do you have friends now with whom you have a, a sort of a contract to listen to each other? in your grief or confusion. Those things matter. I wanna pray for us. Oh Lord God, eternal God, the one who sent us the Bible and preserves the Bible down through the ages for us. We come to you today in lament, recognizing that <clears throat> collectively many of the troubles on our world are because of our sin. We come with lament for our part in each of the sins of our society. We come with lament that we have Many of us so often slipped into spending time with others rather than you. 
to venting our grief somewhere else besides you. And we've read of lament today. We've read some of the, of the very words. So I ask that you will help us to bring our laments to you. Our troubles of old age, our mid-career troubles, and our youth troubles. You know how to handle each one. And so we ask you to, to remind us to come to you. And Lord, there are many prayer requests on our list today. I ask that you look down for each person who's listening here, each person who's calling on your name, look down in their hearts and solve their requests. Let them know that you care, that you are there. And Lord, there are <clears throat> many global things going on that worry some of us, that have struck fear into the heart of society. We ask for your care about weather events that are disastrous and about health events that are disastrous and about war that is disastrous. Will you teach us how to live in this world, letting our laments be heard by you and hoping always in you. We thank you. We've asked it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'll see you next week with the other 7th century prophets. Yes, they're rather sad. But we will find Jesus in them. And we'll find God's love and mercy. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. But first, I want to tell you who I am. Yes, this is the closeout. I'm Wilma Zalabach with Grace Chapel Fellowship. Grace Chapel Fellowship is a church to bless other churches where listening is our unity. And yes, I have a half dozen um, recurring themes in what we deal with here. One is God is love. Two, humans have been taken away from good and love. Three, Jesus came to bring us back. And four, God can. I can't. And I decide to let God. Then two more. The Bible is worth reading. And the Sabbath is a gift worth remembering. So now I'm ready to sign off. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. 